Hi, I'm Howard Rheingold and I'm from the University of Berkeley. So, I'm talking about the uh, technology in a classroom and if it's essential for learning. For transformation for the better, I totally agree that it is essential to include technology in a classroom in order to help students of today learn and enjoy school. From Kansas State University, Michael Welsh made a video in 2007 on what the students really felt in a classroom, what they believed and what they think about technology. By the end of the summer, I had become convinced that the video was over the top, that things are really not so bad, that the system is not as broken as I thought, as we should all stop worrying and get on with our teaching. But when I walked into my classroom on the first day of school, I was immediately reminded of the real problem now facing education. The problem is not just written on the walls, it's built into them. In his class, in the first couple days of school, he tried jokes, he tried to tell stories, he um, he tried tricks, anything to get them stimulated, to get them engaged, to get them interested in the class. What he noticed from the assistant teacher is that the students were not paying attention. Some were on Facebook, some were texting, some were listening to their iPods. Lecture teaching doesn't work, it's not effective. Our students of today need something different. I find that students today or have the attitude of just getting by. Do we really want our students to just get by and do minimal work just to get the grade? I don't. These are our future generations for this nation and I don't want them to just get by in their jobs or anything that they do. They need to try to do the best that they can do and there are no shortcuts. They need to try really hard and find what interests them and go for it. Last year the US Professor of the Year Chris Sorensen stated that he hated school in his acceptance speech. Overwhelmingly, the staff agreed with him. He has a love of learning and spreading the love of learning to the students. But the students weren't loving school because it was boring and the delivery of the content needs to change. The teachers need to look beyond the textbooks to reach and spark the interest of the ever-changing society of children that we all teach today. Prensky quotes that we have digital natives now as the new kids of our society. They live and breathe technology every day they use technology all day. They use iPads, computers, they go on video games, they do e-readers, and they listen to music. Society is constantly surrounded by cell phones, iPods, e-readers, iPads, and especially social media networks. These are all used on a daily basis, all of them. 20 years ago we had technology, but it wasn't the same. Yeah, we use some stuff, but the students of today, they think differently, and they use it in their everyday lives and we should definitely incorporate it into the school system. Our children communicate and process information differently. They're multitasking and constantly finding the next new thing that interests them. Education is the same, but students are different. Immediate fee feedback and fast-paced life is what these students are used to. They enjoy it. They need it. They can log on to a computer and find anything they want in a matter of minutes. As teachers of this generation, we need to find techniques that will enhance their learning in order to reach our digital natives. We want to provide them with real-world real problems and activities, something that's relevant and meaningful to them. Leave them with the wisdom on how to use technology and when it is appropriate to put the technology devices away. I don't believe that the students cannot do that. I think that they will learn and when you're providing them with lessons and things that they're that's relevant to their life that they know that they can use, I think they will be very responsible in putting it away when they should. Uh, meaningful and important jobs or assignments, when they get the meaningful jobs and assignments, they'll be more opt to take and, um, and tackle the difficult tasks that are provided for them. Using technology in the class allows the students to critically think and use levels of Bloom's taxonomy to get an answer. Textbook lectures is a getting by technique Let's keep them busy. They want to work. They need, oh, like the, um, like the video stated, they will read eight books, 2,300 web pages, and 1,281 Facebook profiles this school year. That they will write 42 pages of work and 500 pages of email. They spend three and a half hours online, two and a half hours listening to music, two hours a day talking on their cell phone, two hours at work, two hours eating and seven hours of sleep. I think we could all see that they're on technology, they're on the computer and all their devices all day every day. Let's use them. 
I believe there's four attributes and positive outcomes in the use of technology in a classroom. The first is engagement and interest. They want to show their creativity and joy for learning. And engaging them and providing lessons that will interest them will do just that. Uh, providing technology and using Web 2.0 and social media can reel the students into the lesson and spark their interest. They're already on the computer, like I said before, so why not include some sort of world activity for them to construct and work on? Students are constantly checking their Facebook profiles for comments left by friends, peers, parents, anyone else who's on there. How would a blog or wiki be any different? If the students are able to post things on a blog or wiki and get that immediate feedback from their friends, peers, teachers, I don't see where it wouldn't be the same. When students are interested and engaged, their so-called work doesn't feel like an assignment. It feels like every other day they're on a computer. It's authentic. Which brings me to number two, authenticity. Using the internet and Web 2.0 allows the students to participate with a real-life audience. In the past, students would write an essay and only their teachers and maybe their parents would read it. When they're using the internet, Web 2.0, wikis, and blogs, there's a real audience there that can possibly read their articles or their postings and this will make them try harder to make sure it's a good one. They will also re receive fast feedback, which is what they need. The number three is participation and collaboration. Obviously in a class, whether there's technology or not, there needs to be group work to practice social skills and creativity. Collaboration needs to be a part of the class as well. Students should be required to have their own certain job. In, for instance, if, someone was, if they were doing a group work on an iPad, one person could do the posting, one person could do the researching, one person could do the editing, and the other one could be the facilitator, and they could switch daily. So everybody is collaboratively working together and making sure that they're all participating. And the fourth one, critical thinking, which I think is my favorite and the most important. Nowadays, students aren't required to think. Reading a textbook page and answering questions doesn't require any thinking. They can do it pretty much half asleep. When researching on the computer, they need to adequately think about the various sources. There are millions of sources on one subject, so let's help our students use the best source or find the best source that's reliable and that they can trust. Wikipedia is not the best option. Let's guide our students in the right direction. All these attributes in place, the students have newly developed expectations and opportunities to shine. Let's get them back to loving school because they love learning. I know there's two sides to every story, so I'm sure a few of you are thinking that, there, that technology in a classroom is not appropriate. Let me ease your pain. I know that some teachers probably don't want to change their ways, and that's okay. I'm sure they have some great techniques because they've been teachers for years, but regardless of technology or not, each new school year brings new kids, and you need, teachers need to learn to adapt and evolve to the new classroom that they have. Distraction. Well, maybe. But if we're teaching the students how to appropriately use the technology devices, I think that'd be probably the least of your worries. They're going to want to research and participate in any lessons that are interesting and meaningful to them. Cost, I'm sure, is a big thing. And yes, if we had iPads for each person in the classroom, it'd be $500 a person. But you're not buying supplies, textbooks, or any paper products or anything else extra in the classroom because now the iPad has all these different things that you can do on it. The teacher will have access to all iPads for security reasons to make sure that the students are on task and are on what they should be on. It saves time for the teacher because there's apps that can basically take everybody's test scores, assessments, whatever they're doing, send it to the teacher's uh, iPad and she's got all the answers. It can go right up to the internet and parents can look at it. It's a one-way communication or two-way communication between the parents and the teacher at all times. Overall, students deserve the education that they deserve. They deserve to come to school and love it. And I find that the majority of people or kids, if you ask them, do they love school, half of them would raise their hand. If you ask, do they love learning, all of them would raise their hand. They all love learning. So all it takes is a little creativity, education in the technology field, learning about what our children are doing and what interests them, and if you actually think about it, we are working for them. Oh, <laughs> there you go. All right, well done, well done.